Hi, my name is Eric Ralston. I'm the lead software developer for Shadowrun Awakened, a community-driven effort to develop a free-to-play, mostly multiplayer online game based on the Shadowrun pen and paper role-playing game. This video provides instructions for customizing your installation of the Unreal Development Kit, so it will run the Shadowrun Awakened client. You will need to have previously downloaded the source code for Shadowrun Awakened to your computer. Details for those for that process is captured in another video. So let's assume that you already have the code somewhere on your computer. So for instance, on your C, in a folder called C SRA Development UDK Development. Within the main code, there's a directory called UDK. If you open up that directory, you'll see all the code that you need to modify your installation, laid out in directories very similar to a regular UDK installation. Also on your C drive, if you just installed it to the default location, you should have an installation of the Unreal Development Kit under C, UDK, UDK 2011-06. That is the June 2011 UDK beta. We, until at least December, we are using June 2011, so please download that version from UDK.com. Um, whenever I install, so this directory is the default directory. It is my already modified copy. Whenever I install, I'm, I, make t I like to make a clean backup that contains no mod no customizations. And for the purposes of this video, I've prepared a copy of the backup called Example that I will be using. Comparing the directories together, you can see immediately that the UDK directory is broken up into the binaries, development, engine, and UDK game folder, just like the UDK folder of our subversion repository with binaries, development, and UDK. You'll notice that engine is not in our subversion repository because engine is never modified. Um, to see the UDK in action when it's first installed, open up the binaries directory and go down and find the Unreal front end. It should have a little red cake icon. Double click that to run it. The Unreal front end is different from the Unreal editor. The editor is used to modify assets and can run the game. However, the Unreal front end is the application that you use to build applications, compile scripts, and cook content. So when you first start off, all you have to really do is click the start button to see the UDK in the default UDK in action. This includes some content from Unreal Tournament 3 and serves as a demo for the UDK's capabilities. When the UDK starts up, it will show the default splash screen. It should then launch a introduction video for the Unreal Engine. You can just click past it, and that will put you into the default game, which is a truncated version of Unreal Tournament 3. Um, you could drop into the game and start playing, but we're going to try to keep focused here. We're going to get back on modifying our installation. So closing the Unreal front end, having the local UDK installation on the left, and our custom subversion code on the right, uh, we can just start applying from directory to directory the changes in the in our subversion repository. To start normally we would start off with the binaries, but if unless you are a hardcore developer, you don't actually need to copy the contents of the binaries directory. It contains things like the MySQL support libraries, the Racknet support libraries, and the thread building box support libraries. These are things for connecting to our client to our server and connecting to our database. You don't need that to work on the December release and I'd encourage you to not apply them because binaries can, can sometimes cause crashes. So to start things off for real, we'll start off with UDK development source along with UDK uh, along with the UDK install development source. This directory contains Unreal folders containing Unreal script files. We're going to copy the Unreal script files from the the source of repository into the new into the uh, new UDK installs location and when they first arrive you'll notice that the check mark, check mark for tortoise SVN is still visible what you need to do is go in and delete the .svn directory within the file if it's not visible for you you need to show hidden files and folders you can do that in Windows 7 by pressing alt to show the menu going to folder options the view tab and then toggling the hidden files and folders option so if it's off you won't see a .svn option you want that to be on so you do see a .svn 
hidden directory. So simply delete that in the UDK install directory and you'll see that when you re-enter the check marks will be gone. So do that for both the SRA and script VM folders at both levels within them. So going back to source we can go back up to the UDK, UDK game directory. The UDK game directory contains most of the changes, seeing as how it holds most of the content for the game. This includes changes to the UDK config directory. These are config files that tell the engine uh, what classes to use and, other th and what level to start on and other things. Uh, I recommend just copying and replace for all instead of clicking copy replace for each individual item. So we back back up to content, content, maps, maps, UT3, and copy the SRA room and testbox.udk files into the maps directory. Those are our test maps. And go back out to UDK game content to UT3, UT3, and then you'll do the sound directory. Notice again that I'm not copying the DSVN directories. Uh, it's not good to have them, it'll just confuse things. Uh, so UT3 UI, UT3 UI, and again the folders map one for one, so once you've done one of these applications, or you know, one, one customization, it should be pretty obvious that we've laid out We've tried to lay out the directory hierarchy at the exact same between source source control and your install. So getting back out to content, there's one more folder called splash. Splash contains splash PC. Splash contains the default show screen right as the uh, game is loading, and we've should always replace that with our custom banner. So here we can back all the way back out, go back into binaries, and run the little red cake again. So at this point, we've applied the code changes, the configuration changes, and the content. So from this point, we'll click start to uh, cook and compile everything. So here you'll see our custom splash screen come up, and there's going to be a problem because I missed an important step. Uh, astute watchers may also notice that there was a slight skip in the video. Uh, I tried to run the pipeline process, but script VM didn't get picked up. The Unreal script files didn't quite get picked up. So if you ever have that happen where it starts complaining that uh, script VM or SRA is missing, simply go to script and do a full recompile. That'll fix the problem. So this problem is actually completely different. So I purposely set it up so it would fail because this is the problem that you're going to have if you download this download the code and don't watch this video. Um, there's one final step that we can't really capture in the subversion repository at the moment where, so if we close the program, where what you need to do is you need to change this list of maps to cook right here. Instead of doing DM deck, which is the old start file, what you need to do is SRA room, which is the demo file that's used by our configuration. So to find that out, the easiest way is to pass in the dash log dash console post x equals zero and dash console post y equals zero flags. That will turn on logging, dash log turns on logging, and then console post x and console post y determine where it's shown. So it's going to run showing the log in the top left corner now and that will show you exactly what's going on and if you continue to have problems that's where you'll see little messages to tell you what's wrong so if you're debugging a problem uh, the easiest way is to turn on logging so here you can see the log came up on the left so splash screen again and we'll again see the video and this time it will continue on because I've set up SRA room to cook so from time to time we might change what the start map is or other feature. You will have to go in and change uh, the list of maps to cook. Here's the fully functional prototype successfully installed on on our installation where you can run and jump and run around. There's a separate video talking about the capabilities of this prototype. So 
for the moment we won't have to look at it. So there you go. Fundamentally to customize your UDK you have to download our code, go into the UDK directory, apply each the changes for each directory except binaries. Binaries you don't need to apply unless you're a database or network developer and we aren't going to be working on databases or networks until at least after December. Um, then you go in, you change your list of maps to cook, and you click start, and it should put you right into the prototype version of Shadowrun Awakened. So, if you have a problem with this process, please go to our website, awakenedmmo.org, and get onto our forums. We have a dedicated section for Unreal Development Kit, so from the, from the home page, forums, we have a de dedicated section for Unreal Development Kit. Click on that and start a new topic in here after re after registering, and we'll get right we'll right away uh, put out modification modified steps in the wiki or re-record a new video to help you uh, start building Shadowrun Awakened. Thank you for watching.